and the Sniffers. on in to Neptune Records, Ammo and the Sniffers. Step right over here. Here we are at Neptune Records. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hello, we're Ammo and the Sniffers, and you're watching Nardwar's Video Vault, Canada. Nardwar. Who are you? I'm Amy, and we're Amal and the Sniffers. Amy, who'd you have beside you? Bryce, Declan, Gus. And together you are? Amal and the Sniffers. Yeah! yeah! And right off the bat, Amy, I have a gift for you. Some singles from the rapper Boss. A gift. Ah, to- I give a fuck. I love Boss. What can you say about Boss? Well, it says it all in her name, really. She's Daunt Jazz, and she's got a really great song. It says, I don't give a fuck, not a single fuck, not a single solitary fuck. I don't give a fuck, motherfucker. And have the Sniffers been playing that every night? Uh, yeah, surely. I mean, not in the last two years, but whenever there's a technical difficulty, we pull it out. So that's a gift for you. Boss from Detroit. How did yeah. you discover Boss from Detroit, 93? I can't remember, but it came into my YouTube circuit probably when I was like 14, and I was like, that's right. Is it true, Amy, Iggy is Haley's mom? Oh, yeah, Iggy is Alia's mom. She, so my mom was a cleaner and my mom worked for her mom as a cleaner for a bit. A soccer coach? Yeah, she was also a soccer coach for me for a while. What was that like? Did you know Iggy at all? Or what did she say about her daughter? Well, I was a kid and she was a kid and neither of us were famous yet. So no one said anything about either one of us, but I just kicked a couple of soccer balls badly and then I left. Lunatics on Pogo Stack. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> Did you win a contest and then give out some sausage rolls? Oh, whoa. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, even I forgot that, man. Damn, we did. Yeah, we won um, Triple J on a tie. Triple J's a radio station in Australia. And they had like a high school competition where you put music online and you get to play at a school and play to heaps of people. Yeah, we handed out sausage rolls to people. Remember that? Yeah, I forgot completely. <laughs> With the pogo sticks, did you wear a certain t-shirt a lot of times? I think I wore a June Rats shirt a lot of the time. What else, Bryce? Uh, I'm, I don't know. You, know. What? you tell me, you know. You know. Well, what me. sort of t-shirt do you think Bryce would have worn in a pogo sticks? I don't know. Did you crop or did you cut your sleeves off a lot? I think I wore a Gooch Palm shirt as well. Yeah. I remember Gooch Palms. What do you What do you know, Amy? I got two thoughts in my mind. I think the first one it could either be a Hawaiian shirt, or the second one might be a shirt that says "That's how I roll." What about you guys? Any guesses? Yeah, that's how I roll. That's what came into my mind. I saw you playing bass wearing a. A pulp fiction. Oh. And I have a yeah, yeah, yeah. and I have a gift for you. Yeah. A pulp fiction oh, that's soundtrack. So that's unreal. Yeah, I used to wear this show like every fucking day. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Wore it to death. That's amazing. Thank you. Unreal. But you also took time to do the touching bass pod? The what? The touching bass pod. What's that? Oh. Podcast. Oh, how did you know that? Oh my god, <laughs> this is crazy. Well, yeah. You are aim on the sniffers. We have to know. Uh, me and the drummer did uh, one episode where we pretty much just rambled for about 30, 40 minutes about absolutely nothing, um, and nobody listened to it. <laughs> but you made you made guests special badges. Yeah, we did. Oh my god, that's crazy. <laughs> and you are aim on the sniffers. And I have a gift for Declan right here. The Albert Archives record from 1979 featuring can you check out some of the artists right there easy beats bloody ripper billy thorpe as well awesome acdc oh rocking in the parlor i've never heard that before and stevie wright as well billy thorpe he's important isn't he oh my god yeah that's a good record you got there and there's also extensive liner notes as well so you can dig in and explore who's that (laughs) what can you say about john paul young Declan can say more. Yeah, I, th- uh, he, I know he was a sheet metal worker before he became a, a recording artist. And uh, I guess like his genre is sort of Oz Disco. And uh, Lovers in the Air is a great song. And so is Yesterday's Hero. Very good songs. So there we have a gift for Emil and the Sniffers. Some Australian 1979 compilation of 60s sort of 70s stuff.
You're outstanding. With extensive liner notes. Hell yeah. Amy, the yak. Ah, oh, the yak, the youth club for all, hey? BBC Hardcore. BBHC. Brr. What can I say about that? Um, when I was a kid, like I grew up in a pretty hippie area. There was like lots of ukuleles and relaxing and stuff. And then there was this thing called BBHC, which stands for Byron Bay Hardcore. And they had a place called The Yak where they'd just chuck on like free hardcore shows, punk shows, garage shows and all that. Who told you about hardcore? It was a girl, right? Yeah, there was a chick I knew in high school and she took me along to a place in Lismore and we watched a band play there. And I remember someone said to me, that girl looks like Kesha. That's what I was wondering about that comment. What do you think about that comment? Uh, well, I had like blonde, like bushy hair and stuff. And I guess, you know, I don't know why, but I'll take it. What about that era of Amy? What do you know about her praise? Because you're from that area. Yeah, we grew up together. Um, I've known her for since we are like bloody 13 or something, I think. That's right. What was Amy like back then? Uh, just as crazy as she is now, <laughs> I think. Amy on the sniffers, I have another gift for you. An issue of Ugly Things fanzine, Wild Sounds from Past Dimensions, and who's on the cover? Colored balls. Colored balls. We love Because you love reading too, don't you? Yes. yes. And if we could open up to the anointed page, what can you say about the colored balls and lobby? Well, they all have great hair, yeah. for one. A very unique look. Yeah, definitely. Great, great style, and I guess like Lobby sort of considered the godfather of Australian rock, so he was inspiring for ACDC and the Angels and everyone else who's come after him. He's sort of like Australia's first guitar hero, so he's very inspiring to our new generation as well. And if we open further, what do we see right there? This is again us looking through Ugly Things fanzine with hey, somebody seventy four. Yes, yeah, seventy four. What can you see about the Sunbury Festival and also about ACDC? Uh, ACDC tried to play after Deep Purple there, and I think Deep Purple's uh, roadies tried to fight them off stage, and they called out the audience to try and help them fight Deep Purple's roadies. I know, that, and I saw a, uh, I saw, I don't know what it's called, but like I saw a, a sheet where it saw everyone's prices. I know that ACDC got paid three hundred bucks to play Sunbury as well. Is that good for Emil and Sniffers in early days? Three hundred bucks? What do you think? Oh yeah, I'll yeah. take it and run. Yeah, I know, exactly, like amazing. But that is for you, Ugly Things fanzine, exploring the history. Colored balls, they are important, aren't they? They are special, yes. And as I said, they have a very unique look. It's the Sharpie look, isn't it? That's right. And the Sharpies have a special dance? Yeah, they kind of get that. Yeah, can you demonstrate the Sharpies dance? They like twist their hips. I haven't done it in a little while. I'm a bit rusty, but I think <laughs> they twist really their shift. They, they twist their hips and kind of put their arms up in the air and get a bit like that or something. Do people dance like that at your gigs? No. Have you seen that? No, not yet. Thank you, dumb punts. Oh, yeah, dumb punts. They're our mates from eight. Oh, it's still our mates. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah, they're our mates. We've um, played a bunch of shows with them before. I used to be a massive fan. I think I have a shirt in my suitcase at the moment somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First gig. That was our first thank night. you, dumb punts. Thank you, dumb punts, yeah. You played with them. That's right. And thank you, Pablo, for um, booking us on there. I think we played a 15 minute set. They actually helped you come together. You met Declan at the. Dump Punts yeah, gig? That's right, yeah. Oh. Holy shit, yeah. That's how we all, like, me and Amy met Declan. We almost went to another gig, a Peter yeah, Bibby show, yeah. and we decided to go to Dump Punts with the Grace Darling in Melbourne, and that's how I met Declan. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Did you used to do PI? What is that? <laughs> Private investigation. Uh, ba boom! What do you remember about that night, Declan? So Dumb Punts, they played at a, a, a denim show in Richmond, and it was my first night in Jurassic Nark, my band before Amel. And then we all went to Grace Darling for another Dumb Punts gig. Yeah, so they played twice in one night, and that's when I met everybody. And I was, like, trying to spruce my band. I was like, oh, well, you know, Jurassic Nark, we could play with Lunatics on Pogo Sticks. And then that's how we met. Is that how you remember it? Yeah, pretty much. And then we couldn't get rid of him. Then I missed about two weeks of university after that because he just kept hanging around our house every day going, have a beer with me, have a beer with me. <laughs> and at that time, you were where, Gus? I was in Tasmania with no knowledge of any of their existences. <laughs> He was, he was in his rock and roll womb. <laughs> so, Gus, you're into the hip-hop, and I have a gift for you right here. A KMD record, original record, from original from 1991 featuring MF. Doom. His first record. Is that Love X? Was that his? Yes, exactly. 
Is it causing more damage? Causing much damage? What can you say about MF Doom in the early days? KMD. That's wild. Yeah, KMD. This was him and his deceased brother. Fuck. Yeah, this is mad. An original record for you. Fuck yeah, thank you. A possible cover for Emil and the Sniffers? <laughs> yes. Like you cover Boss and now KMD. Fuck yeah. Bella Pizza in Tasmania. Oh, La Bella Pizza? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pizza shop from back in the day. It's not open anymore, but it's fucking real good. Like the only place, only place you could get a pizza by the slice. Does Gus know pizzas? He knows everything about food. He loves pizza, annoying, food, though. yum. Yeah, he loves it all. What about you, Declan? Stretch pizza. Oh, shit. Stretch, yeah. Oh, my God, dude. That's getting close to my house. <laughs> yeah, I used to live right behind Stretch Pizza. I used to... Um, I actually got at Uber Eats a few times when I was very hungover. But, um, yeah, it was a good pizza. I remember, I think, me and my housemate, two, two margarita pizzas for $30. Yeah. And you were really into keeping fit, aren't you? Yeah, I like it. During lockdown, I got on the YouTube workouts and everything. I have something special for you. This person doing aerobics. What is it about? Oh, Miss Piggy. Oh, the queen of all. Look at her. She's the best. She's, look at, obviously I rep my whole style off of her. <laughs> and now you can do Miss Piggy aerobics. Look at it, her. Snacker side. <laughs> What are some tips you'd give Amy? Uh, I guess just make sure everybody's everybody's looking at you when you're diving because we've seen some shockers before, absolute shockers. You've eaten dirt. Yeah, I've eaten that much dirt. <laughs> so you don't see the pit opening up? Or what happened exactly? I don't know. I think I've always landed pretty good. I'm sure you've definitely hit the ground before. Have you? Oh, no, actually, yeah, I have. Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I guess like you, land, you kind of jump and then sometimes you just realise your head's about like five centimeters from the ground and then you can feel someone grabbing your ankles and then you flip, get flipped up again. Well, I'm lied, so, you know, I'm flipping around like a pancake. Amy, you are a real MC and you know what's happening and I have a gift for you right here, an Ice Cube doll. Yes! Ice Cube. Because he's important to you. Dollar bill, y'all. Yeah, he was one of my first CDs I ever bought was a Best of Ice Cube CD. How did you discover the Cube? Kmart. I went to, like, there's, like, Kmart, which is, like, a Walmart, I guess, and I flicked through the CD piles, and there was Ice Cube, and there was Slayer, and I bought one of each. Amazing influence. I know. It's broad. And I also thought I have another gift for you, a hungry-type gift, some Cardi B rap snacks. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. She's got a, a yummy, I haven't tried it yet, but I was hoping I'd try this too, but Whippet Cream. It's, like, alcoholic Whippet Cream. I'm a bit afraid that you might try this because look at the expiry date. <laughs> Would you eat that? Would you eat that, Declan? Well, Bryce will, yeah. yeah. Give it to Bryce. Because I thought you were into Cardi B. I love Cardi B so much. Yeah, I think she's awesome. She's so funny. You interviewed her. Yes, I did. And, and on my Instagram highlights, you know how you can like, leave highlights on? I have a video of her talking to you because I love her. Who are you? First off, who are you? <laughs> You are Cardi B? Yeah, I'm Cardi B, yeah. Welcome to Coachella. Woo! And actually, Cardi B is quite inspiring. Look at the back, what she says. Being successful in life and in the music business is all about being true to who you are, knowing your self-worth, never sweating the small things, and always following your gut instincts. If you follow the rule of thumb, it will eventually create a recipe for success. Cardi B. Cardi B, and that's a gift for you. Some wrap snacks expired. Expired. And you worked at the nut section of Coles? Yes, that's right. Scoop and Way. Scoop and Way Coles on um, Chapel Street. What's it like working at the nut section? What do you know about nuts? What have you told Emil and Sniffers about nuts? Well, I haven't told them anything. What's that face? <laughs> I thought you were going to say something rude. <laughs> Not me. Um, no, I, don't, I didn't tell them anything about nuts, but yeah, I worked there for a bit. I really liked it. Each bag of nuts weighed 15 kilos because you couldn't you couldn't put any more in one bag of nuts. And sometimes there'd be these little things like these little bugs that would get in them. And if you saw cobwebs in the in the nut holder, you'd have to clean out the whole thing. Hey, well, no, but I, I hit myself. <laughs> what the hell is? I sorry about that. Uh, did, I'm not bleeding, am I? Or, no, no. Oh yeah. I, that would be weird if I started to bleed in my old interview. I, I actually, um, here we are, Emil and the Sniffers at Neptune Records. You have another gentleman with you. Who is that gentleman? Ari Sampson. And where is Ari? Tucked away. 
Come over here, Ari. Please. What can what can you say about Ari? What can you say about Ari? Ari, he's a gentleman. He's lovely. He's, he's calm. Right he's good. <laughs> what can you say about Amal and Sniffers? Amazing people. Wild show. Um, complete transformation when they hit the stage. Individually, Amal and the Sniffers. Who do we have? Oh, just like complete sweethearts. I guess. That's me. Um, noble, self-proclaimed foodsman. <laughs> um, and then we have Declan. Declan, uh, amazing guitar player, sportsman. Rice and Deck both taught me about AFL, and I'm really getting into Australian football. Yeah, it's a great sport. It is. And then we also have Bryce. And we have Bryce, killer drummer, if <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. Amazing DJ, actually. I've been learning a lot about Aussie music through uh, Bryce sitting in the front seat. And, um, yeah, I have a continuous playlist happening that's going to come out after this tour. Hell yeah. And Amy. Amy, um, just such a great band leader and gentle soul, and just it's amazing being part of the matriarch of this group, which, yeah. And again, this is? Ari. Ari, and I have a gift for you, Ari. A glow-in-the-dark Pack ad record. Awesome. The Pack ad from? They're from here, right? Vancouver, British Columbia. Cool. Awesome. Canada. And glow-in-the-dark vinyl. I'll be able to see it at night. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, that's for you. Thank you. And uh, do 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 do. Yeah. 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 Why should people care about Emil and the Sniffers? Why should people care? Um, I don't know why they should care. They don't have to care if they don't want to. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Emil and the Sniffers. Keep on washing your hands in the free world and do do do. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Adela. Also, for everyone back home, he's got two yens on. Dance. Two yens for everyone get from the Melbourne. Shot. Get the shot. Posse shot. Get the money up. Two yens. <laughs> Fresh lad. <laughs> uh. He's stuck. Oh, he's, turn he's turned off. We need to put a coin in there. <laughs> a Canadian coin. <laughs> Thank you. Fix that one. Oh, amazing. Cut. <laughs>